Hello, everybody. Yay, y'all come on in. Yay. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, I'm going to give it a few minutes before we get started in today's tutorial. Y'all, there is a free pattern. Ta -da! It's a four page pattern with pictures in the description box below. If you are relatively new to YouTube, I've got your back. At the end of today's video, I'm going to show you a couple ways where you can find the description box. I get a lot of messages in my videos. Where is the pattern? How do I find the pattern? What is a description box? So if you want to hang with me today, at the end of today's video, I'm going to show you how to find the description box on your cell phone and on a computer. Uh, Miss Cheryl, I see that you found where the letters are. I'm going to show you actually in my Etsy shop at the end of today's video. Y'all come on in and hang out with me today. So great to see y'all. Uh, Jill, I think it was Jill, was saying that she got some pretty fabrics. That's exciting. Yeah, Jill said she's starting another quilt with soft butter yellows as the backing and two jelly rolls of yellow, gray, blues, and oranges. I would love to see that. If you can find a way to uh, share pictures with me, I'd love to see it. Hello, everybody. Come on in. Come on in. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. So let's talk about before we get started today. And if you're watching this on the replay and you want to skip through the chatty stuff, feel free to fast forward. Uh, we have some really exciting stuff coming up. Okay. Not just here on YouTube, but over in the Creative Crew group and in the Creative Squad group on Patreon. So let's talk about some of the stuff. Dari, I'm on your TV. Oh, glory. I hope I'm not too big. <laughs> I hope I'm not too big. All right. Tomorrow, y'all. Tomorrow, fr tomorrow's Friday already. Am I the only one who thinks this week has just flown by like crazy? Tomorrow, Alexis is going live on the Creative Crew group. She's going to be making some bowl cozies. I am super excited to hang out with Alexis as she shows us how she makes bowl cozies. She's going to go live on the Creative Crew group at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. If you don't know what the Creative Crew group, it is a free Facebook group. We are growing and growing. Uh, Miss Maureen helps me moderate that group. And there's a link for that group in the description box if you want to come hang out with us. Next week. Miss Sherry Bazaar, she's one of our moderators today. Thank you to all of my moderators. Sherry is going to do a craft room tour virtually live here on my channel. There's already a thumbnail so that you can go click a reminder so you don't forget. She's sharing her craft room tour Monday the 15th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm excited to hang out with Sherry. Uh, let's see. Ooh, next Thursday starts a new series here on my channel. Let me show you what that's going to be. We're doing this live, y'all. We're going to be making a rag quilt. It's going to be like three, three Thursdays. This is just a sampling piece. Uh, so keep an eye out for the thumbnail for the series starting next week. It's the live on Thursdays. Easy to find, okay? But I'm going to upload the thumbnail so you can download the pattern and get started with me next week. So keep your eyes out on that. This is going to be a wall quilt. Okay, so it's going to be nine blocks across and nine blocks down. So we're making a square rag quilt for the wall. And yeah, this will be a free pattern. Isn't that so cute? I love it so much. So keep an eye out for that. Then, if you are part of the Creative Squad over on Patreon, uh, I want y'all to go ahead and head over there because I've already started getting my stuff ready for the workshop. The workshop, we're doing a free motion quilting workshop Zoom on Saturday, the 20th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I've already got my three exercises ready. I give you instructions on how to get all this set up. Okay, so you have a a week and a half to get this ready for the workshop. We're gonna be free motion quilting straight lines and small curves. We're gonna be doing curves and uh, what we call, what do we call that? 
oh, there's a word that just not echoing. I don't know. <laughs> I forget now. Uh, we're going to be doing curves and then going back through the same quilting and repeating. And so this is an exercise. And then we're going to be doing a circle and curves, and we're going to do free motion fill in designs. So, this is the workshop. These are the exercises. And if you are over in the creative squad, I want you to go ahead and get your stuff ready for that live workshop. We're going to all be set up at our machines during the Zoom, or you can just watch if you want to. But I'm super excited about that. So, that's the 20th at 8 p.m. Lots of fun stuff. Lots of fun stuff. Y'all look at this. This is what we're doing today. Ta -da, ta -da. It's so great to see y'all. It's so great to see y'all. So this is what we're making today. It's a quilted heart card just in time for Valentine's Day. Y'all uh, once you make this one time, you're going to be able to make a lot of them really quickly. Okay. And I'm going to show you like this one. I actually made two of these <laughs> in this color theme. And then Bethany stopped by and she snagged one of them to give to her boyfriend. <laughs> I'm assuming that's what she's going to do with it. But this one that doesn't have any closure in it, right? Isn't that cute? And this one is stuffed with Valentine's and I added a Velcro closure. See, two pockets for some Valentine's. Isn't that cute? This is what we're making today. And this is the pattern. It does have pictures, but in today's video, we're gonna walk you through how to make it, okay? That's what we're doing today. Now, uh, let me bring you back to the main screen for a second. Do y'all remember uh, during the Happy at Home quilt, traditional quilt block series, we did like 53 live videos or something like that. And every day we had a chat topic or a conversation, a get to know you kind of thing. Remember that? Traveling. Thank you, Celeste. Oh, my glory. <laughs> That's what happens to me when I go live. I forget words. Thank you. Traveling. You'll see on the screen, my um, Harlan's parents gave me this game for Christmas and it's just been sitting on my desk and I'm like, I should really start to do that. It's called uh, Table Topics. It's a box of little cards with table topics. So I pulled a card out <laughs> and that's what's on the screen. So during periods where I'm sewing and maybe not talking so much, if y'all wanna talk about the topic for today, is it more important for communication to be authentic or kind? That was the card for today's live. I always thought it was fun after the live in the evenings, I would pull up the live chat and read through all the answers from the questions. I always thought that was fun to do. <clears throat> Ooh, Dari, you got your skin I got. Oh, but you can't use it until the electrical issues are resolved. Yeah, don't plug it in while you have electrical problems. You don't want to mess it up, but I know you're excited. I know you're excited. All right, y'all, who is ready to get started? I think we've chatted enough and everybody's joined us now. Don't forget the chat topic. If you want to type in your answer, I would love to read it. Let's go over the things you need to make these little quilted cards. I have my pattern here and my stuff. All right, we're going to need two card fabrics. Two card fabrics. That's going to be the front of your card, this black fabric here and the inside of your card, the card fabric, okay? You need two pieces of that that measure 11 inches wide and six inches tall. That's gonna be the front and inside of your card. You're gonna need a thin piece of batting. I, I like the 80-20 batting. I wouldn't say that any one of them is my favorite, 
Uh, but you can use any kind of batting that you want. Oh, that's good to know, Miss Vicki. Thank you. I will, uh, I'll keep my eyes open for any troubles. <laughs> Cheryl, I think that is awesome. Three years cancer free. Let's all celebrate for Cheryl for a second. That is awesome. Your batting piece for this project is also 11 inches wide and six inches tall. And then the pocket fabric on the inside, Alexis said you could also use this as a tea caddy. Uh, she's made lots of those for gifts to give away to people. I think that's a great idea. Your pocket fabric needs to be 11 inches wide and five inches tall. Okay, so those are the main pieces that make up this project. And then if you wanna do the applique heart on the front, you don't have to, right? But if you want to, I have a scrap piece of fabric that is four inches by four inches. You could use freezer paper or heat and bond or any of the fusibles you like today. This is heat and bond light. So we will be sewing this down, therefore quilting the front of this card. And um, this is optional. I have some Velcro dots. They're rather large for this project, but there was a pack of them at the Dollar Tree. They do have a sticky, which is pretty strong, but I'm also going to reinforce mine with a little bit of fabric glue um, because the Velcro is really strong on these dots. I wish they were a little bit smaller, but um, yeah, I love the Dollar Tree. So we're going to use those. Snaps would be super cute too. Snaps would be super cute. Sheila. Oh my goodness. She said, I'm walking now and over my surgery for the worst of it. Oh my goodness. <gasps> wow. To me, it seems just like yesterday you had surgery, but I know for you, it probably feels like five years. I am so glad that you are... Um, recovering and that you're starting to feel better yay this is judy's first time joining us live yay yay all right so let me show you this pattern and how what i've done because i feel like i could give you tips during the tutorial that sometimes i might have left out of the pattern right so the pattern is four pages you got the instructions with pictures in this one y'all I got fancy. <laughs> and then there's two pages of templates, okay? Um, let's take a look at these two pages. Page four, you're gonna cut that template out right on the line, just like this. See, my hands are shaky today, glory. You're gonna cut that one out directly on the line, and then this one you cut directly on the line too, uh, but there's your heart applique template for you to trace with your fusible, right? So what I did is I printed two of these pages. One, so I could trace my heart template, and so I can make a whole bunch of these. And then one, I cut the template out, but I took an X-Acto knife and cut out that heart so that I can center my heart onto my fabric. And you'll see how... That comes in really handy once we get to this part. So I printed off two of page three. That's what I did. And the pattern doesn't necessarily say that. <laughs> so to get started, we're gonna bring in, we're gonna leave our pocket fabric off to the side for a minute. We're gonna bring in the batting and the two card fabrics, okay? Just like this, let's layer them like that. We're gonna take one of those and we're gonna trace this template right onto the back side. You could trace on the front side if you're using a lighter fabric, but because I've chosen a black fabric, I would not be able to see my traced line and uh, it's the same whether it's mirror imaged or not. So trace on the lightest side that you can see. It doesn't matter. 
I'm going to trace all the way around this template. Ah, we're getting all kinds of good news today. That's awesome. I'm just tracing, tracing. I love getting good news. Oh, that makes my day. All the way around. All the way around. I'm using a heat erasing pen, but I think for this part it doesn't really much matter because you're not going to see this in the end. I've just really gotten in the habit of using a heat erasing pen for just about everything. There we go. Can y'all see that? A little bit. You can see that a little bit. Once you've traced that template, we're gonna create three layers just like this. One right on top of the other. Just like that. I'm gonna pin these three layers and I'm going to um, cut this out actually, right on the traced line. So that we don't have to do that part later. Just pinning all three of those layers together so there's no shifting. I'm going to use a straight edge ruler for this bottom part because my hands are awful shaky today. We're trimming right on the line all the way around. What heat erasing pins are those? These are the iBody heat erasing pins. I love them so much. They come with like five different color pins, but they also have refills. So when the pin runs out, there's a refill in there. Oh, Cheryl said, who is your buddy there? Are you, you mean the froggy? Miss Hazel made me the frog pin cushion. She sent that to me for Christmas. Isn't that so cute? <laughs> All right, so we're just going to cut right on the traced line. And get rid of everything extra. Where's my good scissors? Teresa, it's your first time live. I'm so glad you're here. Carefully cut out the three layers. I'm going to do this because, y'all, my hands are crazy today. All the way around. While I'm doing this, I'm taking my time. So feel free <laughs> to chat amongst yourselves. That's one of the reasons why we're doing the lives, right? You could answer the chat topic from today. Is it more important for communication to be authentic or kind? When I pulled this out of the box, I was like, wow, I'm kind of conflicted about this because I feel like it should be both. <laughs> I have a hard time choosing uh, my normal uh, personality is that I'm a huge people pleaser. It's just my personality. I don't like to hurt feelings. I don't like to make people upset or mad or angry with me. So I'm a people pleaser. But I truly believe that you have to be authentic with people too. And sometimes that means telling them the truth, which can be hard to do, especially if it's something that uh, might cause hurt feelings, right? Sometimes the truth is hard to hear. But if you can deliver the truth in a kind and loving way, I feel like, you know, that's probably the best, right? 
So I was conflicted when I pulled out this card. It would be hard if I had to pick one over the other, but I guess authentic would be my answer if I had to pick one over the other. All right, so that only took a hot minute. We have all three of our pieces cut out now. See that? They're all the same, all three pieces. Da -da 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 the next thing I'm going to do, here we go, is you want to take your top fabric, which might be confusing because I've used the same fabric for the inside and the front, right? Take the top fabric that you want on the outside of your project. And you can glue based or pin based this in place. All right. I was going to add a little bit of glue stick in there. Just like this, it doesn't take much. Just like that. We're gonna glue baste the batting to the back side of the front. Just like that. I'm gonna dry that glue. Let's wake up the iron. We gotta give her a second because she's been sleeping. We're gonna dry that glue with a good hot iron here in just a second. There we go. So we're not sewing through wet glue, y'all. Hey, what's good, buddy? Looking over your paperwork. I'm thinking you're talking about the froggy. <laughs> All right, so let's dry that glue. It just takes a second. What kind of glue was that? Catherine asked. Uh, this is an Elmer's washable school glue stick. They have the purple one and they have the clear one. I've pretty much gone over to the clear one because sometimes the purple one, even though it's supposed to disappear in your projects or on paper, sometimes it doesn't. And so uh, it's the clear one. It will wash out of your projects. So if you wanted to wash this, the glue will come out. Now we're going to prepare the little applique piece that I'm going to put on the front of mine. I just throw stuff everywhere and then I'm like, where is that? There it is. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> I've got stuff everywhere. We're going to go back to page number three. Okay, that's where your little heart template is. With freezer paper or fusible, I want you to trace that template right on the line. Today I'm using heat and bond light. When you use heat and bond light, you fuse your template to the back side or the wrong side of your fabric. So here's the fabric I'm gonna use for my heart. We're just gonna fuse that right to the back side and cut that out. Celeste, I haven't named them yet. I haven't named, I just call him Froggy. <laughs> Actually, it's a girl frog, so Froggy is a girl. Oh, Jill said, can we make, can we make Froggy? I don't know, Hazel's here. Hazel's here and she said it's Froggy, patterned by Lisa Pay. So search Lisa Pay and you can find the pattern for Froggy. I'll put Froggy right here so you can see Froggy as I cut out my heart template. In the heart template, you're cutting directly on the line. We're doing raw edge applique for this project. There's Froggy. I have two really, two main pin cushions that I use in my sewing area. Froggy stays over here. <laughs> And then the one that Sally made me stays at my cutting table. Can y'all see that? It's right there behind me. That one stays on that table and Froggy stays over here so I'm not back and forth with them. And I have pins wherever I need them. I also have one that has suction cups that Jeannie sent me and that one lives right here on the top of my machine. So I'm starting to have them everywhere. <laughs> 
All right, so there's my heart cut out directly on the line. You can go back here, Froggy. I'm going to remove the paper backing off the back. Now this is really where it comes in handy to have a second copy of this template and cut out that center heart. If not, you're just eyeballing it, right? I'm not that good at eyeballing. Uh, so what I did is I printed off a second copy of this template. I'm going to center that so that the seam allowance, which hangs over the side of that template, is the same all the way around. See that? And now I can just center this heart right in there. And I know it's going to be exactly where I want it to be on the front of my card. And I don't have to eyeball it, right? So I'm just going to lift that up and fuse my heart down. Just like that. And that just takes a second, just like that. Now, if you don't want to stitch your heart down while I'm talking, let me clean up some of this stuff. If you don't want to stitch your heart down, you want to do the heart, but you don't like stitching down applique, use the heat and bond in the red package. You're all done at this point, right? Because that's permanent. You don't have to do any sewing to keep this in place. Because I'm using heat and bond light, we do have to stitch this down. So I'm going to switch over to the sewing machine and uh, pick a stitch and stitch her down. Thank you all for joining me today. Thank you. I'm going to switch over to the sewing machine. Let's see. For this one, let's do, what do we want to do? A blanket stitch. On my machine, a blanket stitch is number six. <laughs> All the machines are different. I'm going to hit blanket stitch. Uh, for the length, I'm going to pick 2.2. For the width, let's bump it up to 2.0. Again, these mas machine settings are going to be different for whatever kind of machine you're using. I'm just saying mine out loud. But I always take a scrap piece and test them out to see what they look like before I even bring in my project, right? Because you might want to change it up. And once you start sewing on your project, it's a little too late, <laughs> right? Let's take a look and see. Right there. I think that'll be cute. I'm going to bump it up one notch to 2.2 in the width, and that's what we're going with. All right. I'm going to bring in, there's no backing fabric on this. All right. We're quilting down this heart with just the heart applique, the front card fabric, and the batting. All right. We're going to lower the needle and stitch all the way around. Just like this. Come into the tip of the heart. Take a stitch. And then keep on going. During the curves, I stop and pivot my work a lot. <laughs> Here lately, the blanket stitch has been one of my favorite stitches to use for applique. I think because it looks like it's hand done and I'm really not that great at doing handwork. This is about as close as I get to something that looks hand done. 
It's become one of my favorite stitches to use here lately. Although I think it's kind of time consuming. Like it would be so much faster just to do a straight stitch right inside the applique. That would be so much faster. <laughs> Going around, we're almost back to the beginning. Almost there. Almost. Almost, almost. <laughs> All right, we're on the home stretch. There we go. I'm going to show you here because I think you can see it closer up here. Isn't that pretty? I love the blanket stitch, although I'm kind of slow at it. I think it's so worth it. I think that's so cute. All right, I'm going to give y'all a second to catch up because I do know that some of you are sewing with me live. So I'm going to just take a pause here. If you're watching on the replay, fast forward, right? Or hang out with us. Is there a similar blanket stitch on her brother? I'm sure there is, Cheryl. Um, it's a pretty standard stitch on most machines. I'll show you what it looks like. I'll draw it. Do I have a piece of paper? While everybody's catching up, if they're sewing with me live, it looks like this. It's got a straight line like that. And then little lines like this. My Juki even has a special blanket stitch, or a couple of them actually, that varies that stitch. So one of them long, medium, short. Long, medium, short. Uh, there's even some on my Juki that does uh, a long one with a heart. A medium one with a heart. A short one with a heart. Isn't that cute? That takes even longer though. <laughs> so I don't usually use that one because I'm a little impatient. But yeah, look for that stitch on your machine. I think it's pretty standard. I think it's pretty standard. Kathleen said, I heard someone mention you can use a thick embroidery thread in a machine for these stitches. Ever try that? I use embroidery thread all the time to do applique. Yes. Now you might have to adjust your tension, right? Uh, so have a practice project set up so that you can make sure that your stitches stitch out well. Anytime you change the thread, right, you should check the tension Make sure your stitches are pretty before you start on your actual project. But uh, have a practice sandwich next to you. Load in some embroidery thread and give it a try. You might have to adjust the tension, but I use it all the time. And it's gorgeous. It's shiny. It's shiny. Hazel, you haven't seen those stitches on your Juki? Look right in the middle. The area, well, at least on mine, you have a different, you're, you have a pretty like purple Juki. Mine is different, 
But the area with those varied stitches is in a gray section in the stitches. Check it out next time you look at your machine. Cece, if you want to make this, uh, the free pattern is in the description box. Print it out and then you can make lots of them just in time for Valentine's Day. Okay, so where are we now? We have our heart that is now quilted, right? We've stitched it down with the batting, so it's quilted. Oh, DMC thread is totally different. I would not use DMC thread in my sewing machine. I don't know if people do that or not. Do they do that somehow? But embroidery thread for like embroidery machines, you can use on your domestic sewing machine. All right, so here we are, y'all. Let's bring in our pocket fabric. Remember this one was 11 inches wide and five inches tall. It's a little bit shorter than the card fabrics, right? We're gonna take this fabric, we're gonna fold it so that the pretty sides are out. We're gonna fold it in half, just like this. And we're gonna press right there, nice and flat with our pocket fabric. Cece said, where did your material come from to make this? Cece, guess what? This fabric is from my stash from my great aunt. So I have had this fabric for 26 years. Nope, sorry. 27 years. 27 years. She was an avid quilter. She was a lifelong quilter. She passed away. I believe it was in 1998 from breast cancer. But before she passed, uh, she gave me a lot of her quilting fabric. The ruler that I use every single day, that came from her in a few books for quilting. And for this project, I have pulled what I have left from her fabric. I could not tell you the designer of the fabric or where the fabric came from. I wish I could, but it's old and it's beautiful and it's special. All right, so we have our pocket fabric folded in half just like this. There's a raw edge and a folded edge. So now we're going to layer this project, okay? I'm gonna take the piece that we just quilted down this heart. We're gonna lay that down first. We're gonna take our pocket fabric Here's the raw edge, just like that. We're gonna line up that raw edge to the raw edge of the front of this card. You should have some that sticks off of both sides. All right, make sure it's just centered, just like that. And then we're gonna take the inside fabric and we're gonna lay that pretty sides down, matching up that bottom raw edge, just like that. And y'all, I know that I take a long time to make these projects during the live because we chat and I want to make sure everybody gets it, right? And sometimes people are sewing with me live, so I really slow down the process. But it does not take this long to make these cards. You could make these really quickly. I just slow down the process so that everybody can keep up if they're sewing with us live. I'm going to pin all of those layers. I usually like to throw like five pins in there. Just like that. Just going to keep these three layers from shifting as we sew all the way around. Up, oh, nope. Back up, back up. I got to take my pins out. We're going to bring in this template. <laughs> this template is going to give us our seam allowance, y'all. See, I got ahead of myself. Center your template right in there so that you have the seam allowance. It looks the same all the way around, okay? And then pin. I got ahead of myself. Just like that. That's gonna give us our little seam allowance, all right? Now I'm gonna repin.
Vicki said, I like the longer videos. Good. Because my lives tend to be at least like an hour. My glory. Not everybody likes that, though. <laughs> and they don't mind telling you that either. They don't mind telling you. All right. I've got one more pin. So once you have all the three layers with your template on top, pinned in place, we're going to bring this over to the sewing machine, okay? We're going to sew all the way around, but we want to leave an opening so we can turn this right side out. I'm going to leave an opening like right here. Pretty good size opening to make it easier to pull because you've got batting, you've got the front and the back fabric, and you have two layers of pocket fabric in there. That's a lot of pocket, that's a lot of fabric to pull through an opening. So we're going to leave a good size opening and we're going to do a back stitch when we start and when we stop so that that doesn't come undone as we pull everything out. Now because we have some curved shapes in here, I like to lower my stitch length just a little bit when I'm doing the straight stitch. I'm using a straight stitch, but I'm going to lower the stitch length to a 1.8 on my machine. Uh, but a little bit lower than you would normally sew a seam, okay? Hazel said a photo and the heart would look good. Ooh, it would. Ah, oh, that would be so cute. That would be cute. Ooh, Connie said you could cut your Velcro in half. I could do that. Yes. All right, I'm gonna switch over to the sewing machine one more time. And I have my straight stitch set up. I've lowered the stitch length and we're gonna sew all the way around the outside, making sure to leave a good size opening, okay? Remember to do a back stitch right when you start. So one, two, three, back it up. One, two, three, and now we're going to sew all the way around. I'm sewing right next to the paper. If you stitch on the paper, it's okay. It'll come off. But I use the paper as my guide, and I'm sewing right next to it. Again, I really take my time in the curved areas so that it's nice and pretty when I turn this right side out. So I slow down in the curves. Just like that. We're coming to our first valley, the center of the heart, up at the top. With my needle down, I'm just going to rotate and then keep on sewing. These cards are cute. You could take a fabric marker and hand write a little message on the inside. Or on the front, wouldn't that be cute? Coming down to the center, we're going to rotate back. and slow. The longest part of this project is probably stitching, <laughs> right? Especially if you're a little slow like me. I like to just really take my time.
All right, we're coming along the bottom. Remember to leave a good size opening. And back stitch. All right. We're almost there. We're almost there. All right, I'm going to take these pins out now. And Froggy can have them back. I'll take off this template. See, I did stitch on the template just a little bit, but it comes right off. See that? Now we're going to go through, and I am going to, I mean, this is a good size seam allowance, but on the curved pieces and projects, I like my seam allowance a little bit smaller than that. So I am going to trim that up. And right in these valley sections, I'm just going to snip that fabric close to the stitch line, trying to be careful not to stitch into that line. Again, I just want to thank my moderators today. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much. Y'all have questions specific for me. If y'all want to type them in all caps, it makes it a lot easier to hopefully not miss your questions for me. Otherwise, if you have questions just in general that maybe everyone who's here live can help with, you could just type it out. Trimming, 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 right down into that valley. Don't cut those stitches, Lisa. <laughs> Because I like to have a smaller seam allowance in these curved areas, having that shorter stitch length is really helpful. Cut that valley and then all the way around. Just like that. Like this and like that. I like to leave that seam a little bit wider because it gives me more to tuck in to finish this project off, right? Then we can reach right in. Sally sent me some of the hemostats, which have come in so helpful. This opening is pretty big, so I should be able to reach in and grab and turn this project right side out. We'll see. Sometimes you have those uh, smaller projects with a little tiny opening to turn right side out. So Sally sent me some hemostats for Christmas. I used them when we made the heart wreath when I made my pieces because I stuffed some of my hearts. Now we're just reaching right in and poking all the curved areas of the hearts out. Lisa asked, how would you add lace for the heart? Ooh, you wanna make a heart out of lace? Ooh, wouldn't this be pretty to have a lace trim on the top of this pocket, Lisa? Oh, Lisa, that's such a good idea. I sew lace to a lot of my stuff in my journals, and I just use a zigzag stitch <laughs> or a straight stitch, depending on the lace, right? I'm struggling. It turned, but I'm poking all these curved areas out. How would you add lace for the heart? I would just applique it just like a like I did this heart with any decorative stitch, but instead of using heat and bond, you could just use a glue stick to like temporarily baste it in place and you're not gonna see the glue through the lace, right? And then dry that glue with the iron. If you're using a cotton lace, if you're using a polyester lace, just let it air dry because you don't wanna melt the lace, right? 
So since I flipped it, I noticed my pocket is on the wrong side. We're just going to flip the pocket to the other side like that. Now it's on the inside of the card. I'm just going to keep poking everything until it lays flat. As a trim, a trim around this. Is that what you mean? I would probably, how would I do that? A trim around this. <laughs> I have a hard time sometimes, y'all, figuring out the question, so it takes me a minute. Because where I would add the lace might be different from where you would add it. Just poking in the inside a little bit like that. And flattening it all out. And then I'm going to give this a good press. My iron has probably gone back to sleep. Lisa, I know I'm probably not answering your question the way you want me to. <laughs> if you join in, in any of the Zooms on Creative Crew, it might be easy to ask your question there and then I will, you know, sometimes that's easier. Trim around the little heart. I'm trying to think if I have any lace close by. Oh, I don't think I do. I wonder. Hold on a second. Give me a second. I'm thinking. I'm just pressing this heart card nice and flat. I've tucked in the opening so that it looks finished like that. And we're going to go back to the sewing machine one more time. Let me just check in this drawer. What fabric markers do you use? I love the fat, the permanent fabric markers. I like the Marvy fabric markers. Oh, my lace is blocked. My lace is blocked. I'm going to stand up for a second. Give me a second. Oh, goodness. Nope, that's not going to be easy, Lisa. <laughs> I've blocked the drawer with my lace in it. I'm sorry. Just pin your, okay, take your lace and lay it like this. You might have to cut it into two pieces for it to lay right, right? Because sometimes lace doesn't want to lay when you start doing little curves with it in this section. And in this section, it might look funny. So cut it into two pieces and lay it right there and pin it or glue baste it. And lay the other piece down and stitch that down either while you're stitching down your heart or stitch it down after with a thread that blends in with the color of your lace because it almost disappears and then all you see is the lace. I hope that's helpful. I hope that's helpful. All right, so once we've pressed that nice and flat, we're going back to the sewing machine one last time. We're going to do a top stitch. So for my top stitch, I'm going to bump up the length on my machine to like a 2.4 and we're going all the way around i like to start right here at the top of the card right in the center okay and you're going to see why that makes some sense here in just a minute so i'm going to lower my needle right in that valley in the center at the top and we're doing a top stitch all the way around Like this. Close to the edge. Like that. That's going to help secure our pockets. Just like that. It's also going to close the opening at the bottom so we don't have to hand stitch that. 
It's also going to help give us a little bit of a quilty look with our card, too. There's some thickness right here at the bottom, so that's one of the reasons why I increased the stitch length, okay? There's some thickness right at the bottom. Coming back up. Did y'all see Anitra's craft room video yesterday? If you haven't seen that yet, y'all should go check that out. That was a lot of fun. There is a whole series of craft room videos. We've done like six or seven now. They're all saved in a playlist. You can go check those out if this is your first time here and you like craft room videos. We're coming back to the very center where we started. Here's where we started, okay? I am right in the stitch where I started. Without breaking thread, I'm going to just turn my project just like this and sew a straight line right down the middle. That's going to secure our pocket and sort of help our card fold in half a little bit easier. And when I get down to the bottom, I'm just going to take like two back stitches to lock it. Just like that. Just like that. So here she is. Now she has two pockets. I like to fold her in half like this and then give this thicker curved edge a little press just to help it lay down and I even add a little bit of steam in there that's going to help your card sit a little bit flatter y'all are so sweet y'all are so nice thank you see how it just so, sort of squishes down that curved side a little bit and so now it kind of just sits naturally closed So you can go just like this, or you can bring in some Velcro dots like this. <laughs> These are super, super sticky. I don't know that you need to add any fabric glue to them. I'm just going to do it just to doubly like reinforce it. So I'm going to bring in my trusty Fabri-Tac glue. These glue dots are huge. Cheryl's, I think it was Cheryl said I could trim them down, but I'm just gonna go with them this way they are. I'm gonna add just a small little drop it. You probably can't see that because it's clear <laughs> of glue, right? There's two Velcro dots just like that. They're stuck together. I'm just gonna lay it right down there. It's gonna transfer both Velcro dots when I lift up the paper. So both of them are stuck together. <laughs> There's both Velcro dots. That way you don't have to try and eyeball the placement of it, right? Now I'm going to add a little drop it of glue to this side. Like that. And then we're going to close this card and press that really well. Just like that. They're perfectly lined up. Kathleen said, I'm totally enjoying the sewing craft room video. Me too. Oh my goodness. It's so much fun. I love to see how people organize their space. I love to look at just all the different craft supplies. Like I'll go into Michael's. <laughs> Or Joanne Fabrics, and I don't necessarily need anything, right? 
I walk down all the aisles. I've always loved looking at craft supplies. It's weird, but I, I do. And so just seeing all this stuff and, and how it's laid out or organized is just so much fun for me. I'm just holding that closed for just a second. I'm really wanting that adhesive from the fabric dots to take hold. The fabric tack glue is going to take a few minutes for it to actually dry, right? So right now we're relying on the adhesive. <laughs> That's strong Velcro too. So there we go, y'all. Isn't that so cute? And then you could stuff it with a little Valentine's in there. Like that. Got some little candies. Like that. You could write your name or a little message with fabric markers. And there's your Valentine's Day card. How you like me now, Hallmark? <laughs> right? <laughs> Isn't that so cute? And it could be reused year after year, right? I have some threads to trim off, but isn't that so cute? I love it so much. It's just adorable. And y'all, it does not take this long to make them. We've been here an hour. It does not take an hour to make them. I've slowed down the process a lot. Y'all can make a whole bunch of these before Valentine's Day. Your husband might like football, you get the football fabric, right? Your kids might like minions. They might like Pokemon, you know, purple. You can customize the colors. You can customize the colors. You could even throw these in your bag like Alexa said and use them as little um, tea caddies. All kinds of stuff, right? I think they're super cute. Super cute. So there we are. I'm going to leave this one open so you can see it open and closed like that with my little props. <laughs> Put that fabric dot away. If y'all have joined me halfway through, there is a four page free PDF down in the description box. You can grab that if by chance, because the Google. Google Docs is what I've used to share the link for this. If by chance it won't print through Google Docs with the device you're using, in the description box, there's two ways to get a hold of me. You can message me on Etsy or you can message me through Facebook. Send me a message and I'll send you the pattern that way if you can't get it to print for some reason. I know last week a few people had issues getting... The pattern to print using Google Docs. I don't know why. If I use Dropbox, some people can't get that. So if you have problems getting the pattern, send me a message. Judy, we're here live uh, every Thursday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. So yeah, put it on your calendar. Same time every week, unless I have something going on, but usually a few days ahead of time, like Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday, sometimes Wednesday, <laughs> depending on the week, I upload the thumbnail so you can set a reminder. And if I have to change the time for whatever reason, then you know in advance. There are occasions where I have to change the time. All right, so what I wanted to do, because now we're all done with the project, right? So we can just chit chat and stuff. Uh, I wanted to show how you can find the description box because this question comes up a lot on several different videos. Uh, and I know that we have new people to YouTube all the time and I didn't even know the description box existed after looking at videos for years on YouTube. So if you're watching and you don't know how to find the description box, I'm gonna show you on a cell phone. Let's pull my cell phone down first. Please, Lord, don't let that thing fall off. <laughs> All right, here's my cell phone. 
Alexis sent me a message. We'll look at that when the video is done. Oh, we've got a thumbs down. Okay, here we go. Whoops. So, let me close that. All right, we're going to click on the video. So here's my video. I got to close the live chat. All right. And I know it's out of focus and I'm really sorry because it's focused for the table. I'm sorry. But I want you to focus on the title of the video right there. Oh, there goes the ad. <laughs> Quilted Heart Valentine's Day card with pockets. There's the title of the video. If you look right to the right of the title of the video, I wish it would show up. There we go. Can you see that? There's a little gray arrow right there. If you click on that arrow, there's the description box that pops right up. The blue links are clickable links. You click on that and it brings up the pattern, right? So there it is. There's the free pattern. And then you can close it, but right next to the title of the video, if you're on a mobile device, see that little gray arrow right there. Now let me show you what it looks like on a computer. Let's see, screen sharing, here we go. All right, it's gonna look crazy for a second. We're gonna go to YouTubes. I wanna make sure that I can still see your comments though. <laughs> In case you have questions, live chat. Okay, so here's YouTube. Let's go to Lisa Capen Quilts. Here's the video from today. I'm going to pause that and we're going to scroll down. Oh, my description box is already open. <laughs> okay, this is what it's going to look like when you go to the video. Uh, here's my profile picture. And it says Lisa Cape and Quilts. That's the name of my channel. You're going to see a short little typed out description about what today's video is. And either to the left here or sometimes if you're on a Mac, it might be more in the center of your screen. You're going to see a, a caption that says show more and if you click on that there's the description box and there are all the links that you can click so that's how you find the description box now earlier before we even started the live cheryl was asking about uh, 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 what did i do with that i think it was cheryl about uh, tracing templates for alphabets. So I wanted to show her, although I think she has already found it, tracing templates. I've come over to Etsy. There is a link for my Etsy shop in the description box. Uh, you're gonna see, let's see, let's say Lisa Capen Quilts. Da -da -da -da. Where would they be? We're going to scroll through all my listings. It should not be that difficult. I usually have a little tab set up. Oh, yeah, the shop. Lisa Cape and Quilts, the shop. Here we go. <laughs> all right, yes, if you go straight to my shop. Okay, Lisa Cape and Quilts. You're going to see I have everything broke down on the side. We're going to go to stencils. Are they there? No. Alphabet templates. It's almost like a Monday. I have two different styles of templates. One is a really simple, basic uh, letter. Okay, and it comes in lowercase and uppercase. And then one is more of a wonky letter. You know, sometimes you want to do a project that's a little wonky. I have a wonky one. 
So both of them come in different sizes. There's a two inch, a three inch, oh, two, three, four, and five inch. So that's a sample of the simple letter templates. Just like that. So there's different sizes that you would uh, that you could get. But you know what? Uh, I'm not the only one who has templates with alphabets, and I really only have two styles. Uh, so check out Etsy for other ones if you're looking for something in a different style, right? But there you go. Ding, 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 ding. New camera. There we go. Let me set my phone back up so that I can see your comments. Just in case. Be mine is gourd is adorable. Can that be purchased? Yep, it's right in my Etsy shop. And there's a video for that one too. I did a small, short, like 15 minute tutorial for that. See, it's up on the wall behind me. Uh, so, yeah, you can get that, too. Cheryl said, what kind of Velcro is it? This is a self-adhesive Velcro that uh, I got from the Dollar Tree. You actually get, like, 10 dots or something like that, 20 dots for a dollar. They're kind of big for this project. But I used a little bit of fabric glue, too, to reinforce it, right? It's not a sew-in Velcro. This is like a self-adhesive Velcro. Let's make sure I haven't missed anything. Any questions? This tea is good. It's starting to get cold because after an hour, my little heater that Lisa sent me turns off by itself. Connie asked, does anyone else have trouble knowing when to stop to turn? My quarter inch is metal, not clear. The metal feet make it hard to see, right Connie? Do you have any other feet that came with your machine, like a clear foot or an open toe foot? Uh, sometimes I use different feet for what they're not intended for, just because I can see better. <laughs> Take a look and see what other feet came with your machine. Just to give you an example, this is my eye foot. Oh, let me show you. <laughs> this is my eye foot. And it's clear and I can see a lot of my work. Sometimes I'll use this as my quarter inch foot. I have to check my seam allowance and set it up for a quarter inch. But sometimes it's easier for me to use this foot when sewing. Right? Uh, and then, like this is my standard quarter inch pressing foot. And most of it's metal. There's a little clear part in the center. Sometimes it's easier for me to use this than it is this. But I also, let's see, where's that little foot? This is one of my favorite feet for you for doing applique. It's completely open. But sometimes I use it for stitching down around templates using a straight stitch, not doing applique because I can see better. So sometimes I use my feet for what they're not intended for. <laughs> Check to see what other feet came with your machine. Hi, Margaret. Connecticut. Y'all, I think we're supposed to get some snow this evening. <laughs> That's what they said anyway. I don't know. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you. Y'all, thank y'all so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, I, I always feel like if I leave too quick, I've missed somebody's question. If you asked a question, let's hang out for a second. 
if you asked a question and I've missed it, now would be a great time to repeat it because I'm not switching cameras back and forth. <laughs> Ooh, it's snowing in Chicago. Snowing in Chicago. I've actually seen a lot of snowflakes here, but it has not amounted to much of anything this year. Margaret's supposed to get snow on Valentine's Day. Hazel, you have snow in the UK. Ah, oh, you're trying to get to the link for my store. Uh, it's in the description box. So if you open the description box, there's a link to my Etsy. Uh, lots of people who don't do Facebook send me messages through Etsy. Uh, and so I've put a link to my Etsy shop right down there so you can get in touch with it, in touch with me through the messages part. But that's how you find my shop too. Judy, you got here late. Well, the awesome thing is there's the replay, right? Once you go to my shop, uh, I think the Be Mine mug rug is featured up at the top, so it should be e real easy to find. Or if you go over to YouTube and you search Lisa Cape and Quilts Be Mine, the video should pop up and there's a direct link to that pattern in the description box. So there's lots of ways to find it. <laughs> and I think I make it way more confusing when I say all that. The easiest way to find it is just to click on my shop and go straight there. Could you show us the progress on your EPP in one of your future videos, please? So not five. Are you talking about my, oh, have y'all noticed I've added more blocks to my pie quilts? Let me show you up closer. Can you see that? It's kind of fuzzy, right? I think this weekend I did six more blocks for that. I still have a long ways to go. Yeah. I'll take a picture and put it up on my Lisa Cape and Quilts Facebook page. Oh, Kathleen said, yes, you could put your little insurance card and your registration and put it in your glove box. <laughs> Such a cute idea. You could certainly find it easily, right? If you got pulled over for speeding or something. <laughs> and here, officer, here's my information. <laughs> Dari, I hope you're able to get your uh, electrical stuff sorted out so that you can get using your brother scan and cut as soon as possible. I hope so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you found it, you found it. I'm so glad you found it. I, I say things way more confusing sometimes than it actually is. <laughs> Before we go for today, y'all, I just want to thank you so much, my moderators. I, I don't want to do live videos without you guys. And I know it's time consuming for you. Uh, thank y'all so much. Thank you so much. If I could reach to the screen, I would give you the biggest hug. Thank you so much. Kathleen said, I panic at the AAA office. Easy to find a little extra. Yes. Yes. Veronica said, tea bag gift. Yes. That's what Alexis said, too. You know, we made those little ones at Christmas time. This would be cute for a tea bag holder as well. I think so, too.
Charla, I totally agree. I was saying earlier, uh, I have a hard time picking. I'm conflicted. If I had to pick one or the other, like a hard choice, I would say authentic. Hmm. But I agree it should be both, right? My people-pleasing personality wants to say kind, right? Because I don't want to make anybody mad at me. But if you love somebody, I think you should always tell them then the truth is being kind. You just have to deliver it in a loving way, right? That's the hard part. <laughs> Thank you. Debbie, you just got home from work. Are y'all supposed to get some snow where you are? You're not that far from me. Check your weather forecast. Check your weather forecast, Debbie. All right, y'all. I love y'all so much. Next, uh, let me grab it. Cool. Next Thursday, we're starting a three-part series. Keep your eye out for the video on this. Actually, if you're in Creative Squad, you've already gotten a pattern for this. Just saying. But uh, it's going to be a free pattern for everybody. I will have a thumbnail up like tomorrow or Saturday. And uh, so you'll be able to print off the pattern way before next Thursday. We're going to break this down into three live videos. I'm going to walk you through the process. It's a rag quilt. But instead of the traditional X through the squares, right? We're appliquing a little heart, and I've stitched these down. You can't see it because I use black thread, but on the back, maybe you can. See that? So we're changing it up a little bit from the traditional X through the quilting, but eh, it's going to be so cute. This is what we're doing for the next three weeks. If you love rag quilts, you're going to love it. If you don't so much like making rag quilts, I hope you still come hang out with us. <laughs> Right? That's, we want you to come hang out. Okay, everybody. Uh, Monday, Sherry Bazaar. We're hanging out with Sherry on Monday. Keep your eyes out for that. Okay? I'm excited. Miss Sherry. I've already talked with Sherry. She's got a lot of cool tips to share with y'all, especially if you have smaller spaces that you're working in. Sherry's got some awesome tips to share with you. Um, and then if you are interested in sharing your craft space, whether you have a gigantor crafting room, whether you're in an entire basement, like some of our members, or if you set up at the dining room table, like what I used to do for several years, that was my space. We want to share your space and how you organize, how you set up, and how you make it work. Because you're not alone. Lots of people have spaces just like yours, and I want to share that with everybody. So if you want to share your crafting space, let me know. All the ways to get in touch with me are in the description box. Send me a message. We'll chat and set up a time that works best for you. Those videos are not uh, the same time. Same day, same time. They're going to be when it's best for the person who's hosting, right? So just keep your eye on the channel. I set up a thumbnail so you know in advance when it's going to be. If you want to show off your stuff, let me know. All right, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic week. Uh, for sure, I'll see you Monday and then next Thursday. Bye, everybody.